was entitled when I graduated with my bachelor's degree, I was entitled to a great job and I was entitled to be happy because darn it, I worked really hard to get there. And then you start working as a young professional and you've got all these expectations and you think there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And then you realize, wait a second, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Hmm. Why are these people not agreeing with me? Why don't these people listen to me? Why is my boss making me do that? Why do I have to do customer service? I don't know anything about customer service. Why do I have to write all these ports? And it goes on and on and on and on. Welcome to the Happy Engineer Podcast, the place where we help engineers like you to build your career, balance your life, and be happy. I'm Zach White, former engineer turned lifestyle engineering coach and your host for the journey to the career and life that you desire. Hey, I believe that you shouldn't have to sacrifice your life to reach your full potential at work. And what we're going to bring you in these conversations and interviews are the strategies, the tools, and the mindsets that are going to allow you to experience both success at work and success at home. Hey, we do the best we can to keep this free from advertisements. Of course, I can't control what YouTube may throw up, but do us a favor and share this podcast with anybody who you think may like it. And don't forget to click the bell and subscribe and get notifications to our YouTube channel and for upcoming releases of the Happy Engineer podcast. I would love your feedback and even more than that, love your story. Share with us how these strategies and tools are working for you. Would love to be in touch with you. Connect with us on social media. Find me at Oasis of Courage on Instagram, Facebook, or Zach White on LinkedIn. It's an absolute pleasure to serve you. Now let's do this. Hello, hello, all my happy engineers out there. It's awesome to be back with you. I'm here today with a special guest, Gina Covarubias, certified life coach and an aeronautical and astronautical engineer from the best university, my alma mater, Purdue, boiler up, so excited about that, and an MS in mechanical engineering from the University of Utah. Gina has a really distinctive and exciting background blending life coaching and her expertise as an amazing coach with 12 plus years in engineering and technology experience in government and academia in corporate aerospace and founded Deliberate Doing LLC, her organization with exclusive STEM coaching services dedicated to helping technical professionals just like you to defeat career despair and solves that common STEM problem. What is next for my life? As a former engineer, Gina really understands and can identify with you, the technical expert, you know, the questions that come up in both personal and professional side of our existence. And as an engineering life coach, Gina's mission is to help STEM professionals evaluate their journeys in the context of their lives. When a discouraging path has you questioning previous choices with an unknown future, Gina's there to help you recalibrate your journey and align with your personal goals. You can tell why I love this lady and it's so much fun to be with her today, right in the heartbeat of what OA goes all about. Gina, thank you so much for taking time to be with us today. Zach, I'm so excited to be here as your guest on your podcast. Thank you for having me. This is going to be a great conversation. I think we have a lot to talk about today. Oh, man. We, we could go all day, Gina. And, and for those listening, you know, we first met, had an opportunity to do some presenting together and share career path, direction questions, and have had a lot of fun. But Gina, why don't you first take us back to the beginning? What was your career experience as an engineer? Well, I will tell you, from the time I was a child, I think I was, I fall in the rare category here. I was the, the college student who knew exactly what I was going to major in. I was going into aerospace engineering, no question about it. Nothing else existed in my mind. So I never waffled. I never flip-flopped. I knew that's what I was going to do. 
and I was always good at science and math. And so it completely made sense. I was fascinated with the space shuttle and airplanes and everything aero. So I go to Purdue and finish my degree and start working as an engineer. And I discovered very quickly that I didn't feel like I fit in. Mm. I also knew I wanted to pursue a master's degree. So what I did was I worked full time and pursued my master's part time on the side. And so I was a very busy young professional doing that. I finished my master's in a couple of years. And by the time I graduated with my master's, I had told myself, I had this belief, I don't want to be an engineer. Like this, this is not what I had in mind. This is not what I want to do with myself. So it was a very difficult time in my life because here I was with two engineering degrees and I thought, this is not what I want. So I felt really stuck and I even kind of fell into a little bit of a depression and I thought, you know, maybe I just need to change things up. Maybe I just need a different job, different employer. I ended up doing that, changed the job, ended up moving and looked for jobs outside of engineering. I really tried okay. to broaden some of the things I'd done in the past, but I, I had a hard time finding other jobs and I didn't even know what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. So I ended up back in engineering and it was okay for a while. I did my thing. I went to work, got the job done, but I felt like something was missing. I would just think to myself, what, what is it I'm supposed to be doing? Like I can go to work and I can do my job, but there was always that, but, and I was mm. making a living and I had great benefits and on the outside to everybody else, it seemed like I had it made. And on the inside, I felt like a complete failure. And that was really hard to come to terms with. So Gina, take us back to those earliest moments where you started to feel like you didn't fit in. What did that actually look like? Where did you start to feel and how did you know something doesn't fit here? What were the beginning indications of that for you? I think the indications were that I, I kept longing for more. And there was something that was supposed to make me happy and, and I, I couldn't quite find it. And I didn't know what it was. So it's not that I was unhappy necessarily. I felt like I was missing something. It was a feeling of longing. And for some time, um, my first job was very technical and I didn't have to work with many people and I felt kind of isolated too. And I think that came into play as I had these thoughts in my mind that this is not what I should be doing and there's gotta be something better. And it kind of snowballed, Zach. You know how you get in your own head and you create this belief and then you keep finding evidence to prove it. And it just snowballs and gets bigger and bigger. And so what I did is what most people would naturally do in that situation. I tried changing my circumstances. I tried changing jobs, changing employers. And while it offered temporary relief, that wasn't the long-term solution, but I, I didn't know it at the time. How did that snowballing thought that I don't fit in and I don't know if I want to be an engineer. How did that actually affect you? Did it impact your performance at work? Did it create, you know, a stress or anxiety that manifested in your life or health or other things? How did that look in Gina's life? That's a great question, Zach. All of the above. It affected everything. Okay. It affected my work ethic, my results, the image I had of myself. I felt like a really big failure inside, even though on the outside, things looked great. But in my mind, I had worked so hard to get through school. I took out thousands of dollars worth of student loans. And I made a lot of sacrifices to put myself in this position that I thought was going to make me happy. And I was anything but happy. So yes, it affected me mentally. It affected me at work. 
Luckily at that time, my health was not affected yet. That happened a few years later when I fell into the same boat. So yeah, it absolutely affected every aspect of my mm. life. I stopped caring. I became very unmotivated. Would you say you never really connected with engineering as a profession or like you liked it and you were good at it, but there was just this other feeling alongside it? Did you like being an engineer? At times I did. There were times I, I loved it. Yeah. And there were times where I thought, um, I should be doing something different. This isn't me. I should be doing something better or something more creative. You know, there was always something that I could think of. So yeah, there were ups and downs. There were ups and downs. Where was the first moment then that you started to truly entertain the idea of getting out of engineering as a profession? That probably happened right around the time I graduated with my master's degree. So at that point, I had only had a few years of, of engineering experience. And so I kind of justified staying in engineering by telling myself, maybe I just need to try something different, new job, new employer or whatever. Mm -hmm. Did that. It was okay for some time. And then the same thing happened, Zach. I fell into this depression. I was going through a stressful time at work and the belief came back. I, I shouldn't be doing this. There's something better for me. I'm not happy and I don't know what to do about it. And the second time it happened, my physical health became affected. So not only did it come back, but it came back much stronger. It wasn't just a, a one and done. This was mm. a pattern that kept happening with me. What was it that actually pushed you over the edge, so to speak, the, the actual decision point in your life that enough is enough, it's time to go another direction? I think what happened is after I was able to recover physically from all of these health issues that were bombarding me, and that happened about 10 years ago, and I was out of work for several months on disability. I mean, I was in really bad shape. So I eventually recovered and got back into the workforce. And over the course of several months, I started wondering and I started asking myself, what is it Gina is supposed to be doing really? I can go to work and I can do this and it's fine. But I felt like I was meant for something different. I told myself, you know what, I had been given a second chance in life here because several months ago, my health was going down the tank. I didn't know what was going to happen. And here I am, I'm recovered, I'm back to work. And I felt like life is too short. I've been given a second chance and I need to make it matter. And that's when the thoughts started popping in my brain. Maybe you need to be doing something different. Maybe you have done engineering enough and seen it enough to know what you would be leaving if you were to walk away. And that's exactly what I decided. So I walked away. I was very, very, very much at peace with that decision. I wasn't running. I wasn't frustrated when I left the profession. I just decided this was a dream I made come true. Now it's time to make a different dream come true. And I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what that means. But I decided I'm leaving. I'm going to live off my savings, do some self-reflecting and figure out what is it Gina is supposed to be doing. You kind of touched on it, but, but like this is a big deal. I want people to hear this. What started as a thought that I may not want to do this and led to a deeper internal feeling of being a failure, but still lived in the kind of the thought realm of your life, spiraled into short-term disability because of health-related issues that nearly took you out of the game completely. What was that cascading domino? Like, where did it fall on, into that place? That's a really big consequence, right? I mean, tell us a little bit about that downward spiral or like, how does that happen? If somebody's in that place, maybe they can connect with what you <clears throat> said. Like, I feel like a failure right now as well. Is that on the horizon? What's that like? Just tell us a little more about what happened there. The feeling of being a failure 
on the inside, even though everybody thought I was the most successful thing in the world on the outside, that was very, very difficult for me to face. It required me facing some of my demons. And while I pushed through it and I came up with the solution of maybe I just need to change jobs and change employers, that was my solution at the time. However, I never really faced that demon head on. It just kind of lingered and stuck around. And so here I go on a new adventure, a new endeavor, and then things at work kind of started going sour. And I was working with a team that didn't really understand teamwork, and there was a questionable boss, and things were happening. And it happened over the course of several months. I blamed my career for stress that I was feeling. So between all the blaming and the past experience of I've, I failed myself, you combine all that and it took me down. My body physically eventually said, no more, I can't handle this. Hmm. So mentally, I put up with it for a long time and then eventually my body just said, I'm shutting down on you. Like I'm quitting, I'm done. If someone's in that place listening, Gina, where it's in their mind today, maybe they relate exactly to what you're saying. What would Gina today say to Gina before the health issues, but feeling some of those thoughts and emotions you described, what would you share with Gina then? Oh gosh, Zach, I thought about that. And that's such a good question. What I would share is that looking back when I was going through all those things and I was blaming and feeling like a failure, I needed Gina as a life coach back then. Mm. That is exactly what would have gotten me through those times. Today, Gina as a life coach understands people who are in that situation. I could say from experience, I've been there, done that, but I also know now why I was in that situation and I understand how some of my thinking and beliefs created that for me. So what I needed back then was me as a life coach. Yeah, is it fair to say, plain and simply, don't try to solve that problem on your own. Go get a coach, work with Gina, (laughs) like reach out and get that help before you end up on short-term disability dealing with those kind of problems. So I don't know about you, Zach, but have you ever tried explaining a stressful situation or frustration with, let's say, family or friends? And they kind of look at you like, "Mm, no, I don't really know what you're talking about. I can't relate to your problems. And as an unhappy engineer, if you're going through a stressful time at work and you try taking this home to some friends or family members and they look at you like, why are you so unhappy? What are you talking about? You've got it made. You work for a great company. You have a great job. It, it just takes you down even more. So while friends and family, they can have the best of intent, but sometimes you need an unbiased party, a coach or a therapist or a counselor or, or somebody who's not in that situation with you who can help you see other perspectives. That yeah. you're not seeing. Super powerful what you just said, Gene. And I see it with the engineers that I coach as well, that the world external to you, the engineer, is going to look at your situation and say, you have nothing to complain about. You make great money, work at this great company. You've got a house in the suburbs. You're married. You got two kids. You know, like you have the American dream or wh- whatever that story might be from the outside looking in. When on the inside, you feel like a failure, you're dying, you're confused, you're frustrated, you're stuck, all the things that you mentioned. And so just to maybe encourage the person listening, that engineer listening, if you're feeling like every time you attempt to share this with friends and family that it's making it worse, this might be part of the reason. And, and so Gina, let's, let's take it then to the point you, you quit you were living off savings. Where did you stumble into the idea that this path is taking me towards being a life coach? When I left the engineering profession, I had a very, (laughs) not a great plan. I had a small plan, 
my plan was I'm going to study for the PMP exam, project management professional. I'm gonna take a month or two and study my butt off and take the exam. And then I'll get a job as a project manager. And that's just gonna kind of be surface level stuff. What I really wanna do is figure out what it is I'm supposed to be doing. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna leave my job. I'm gonna live off my savings. I'm gonna study for this exam. That was my plan A. I'm gonna get this certification. I had taken the exam two years prior and failed it. So I knew what I was in for and I changed my strategy to studying. So here it is, June, the whole month of June comes and goes. And this was my short-term plan, mind you. I did not wanna be a project manager forever. I'm studying for this exam every day. July 4th comes and goes, it's been like six, seven weeks. And I had a moment in my kitchen as I'm studying for this exam and nobody's around and I'm, I'm reading and I'm writing, doing whatever it is I'm doing. And I remember clearly, I just kind of looked up and I said, I hate this. I hate this. I effing hate this. This is not what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. Why am I studying for this exam to set me up with a job that I'm just going to be disappointed with once again? And that was really hard to come to terms with again, Zach, because yeah. here I just wasted seven weeks living off my savings. I felt like I wasted it anyway. And I thought, this is silly. I don't want to be project manager. What am I doing? Mm -hmm. And so that was another moment for me. Very hard to face, very hard to admit to myself. And then I thought, all right, you know what? If I hadn't studied for this in depth like I did, I would never have figured out it's not for me. So it needed to happen. Yes, yes. And then I went to my next plan and I thought, I'm gonna just dive into stuff. I wanna educate myself. I felt like I had been dumbed down and I started taking online courses. So like lynda.com or um, sure. Teachable, things like that. And then I started listening to podcasts and I ordered a stack of books and I just threw myself into knowledge. And the question I was trying to answer is, what else is out there? What am I missing? And one thing led to another. I discovered a life coaching podcast, Zach, and I started listening to it. And I was really skeptical. So by this time, it was August. We're getting to the end of summer. And I saw this life coach podcast. And I thought, that sounds mm, a little strange. I don't know about that. But I'm going to give it a listen. So I started listening and I was blown away. And I thought, okay, I need to go back to the beginning and start with episode one. Listen to one and two and three. And I had a moment, Zach. And that moment was, that should be me on that podcast. I should be a life coach. I need to do that. And it was just, it was visceral. It was instant. There was no question. From that point on, I researched a few different life coaching options to become certified. And I went ahead and signed up. And here I am with my life coaching business. So I wasn't necessarily looking for it. It just, it just kind of happened. I, I really love how you're telling the story, you know, sort of moment to moment to moment. And Gina, I'm curious, do you feel like you did anything to be able to to receive the value of those moments or to really be aware and listen to your intuition and be present in those moments? Or did it just slap you across the face? There was really no no way to miss it. I'm just curious because you know a lot of people might hear this and, and I know for myself, like we might have a little anxiety about like, did I miss my moment or am I ignoring the moments or am I silencing that voice? And do I need to learn how to be more attuned to this? Like what Gina is like, what, what was your experience with that like? Did you have to put yourself into a situation where you were ready for that moment? Or is it now just looking back, you can connect those dots and you see it for what it is? The best way I could answer that question, Zach, is that I wanted to be true to myself. I wanted to be fair to me. And I wanted to put myself in a position where I understood my strengths and my weaknesses. 
and how I could actually use my strengths. So for me, it was all about self-awareness and trying to tap into what makes me tick. Um, after I decided I did not want to be a project manager and I didn't want to study for this silly exam at the time, I asked myself a question that I couldn't answer. And I was kind of mad at myself because I couldn't answer it. And the question I asked myself was, if somebody saw me, Gina, doing my thing, and they said to themselves, wow, she was really meant to be doing that, what would that thing be? And that question plagued me, Zach. And it irked me and it frustrated me. I thought about it every day for several weeks because I didn't know how to answer it. Mm. And that led me on the journey to diving into online courses and podcasts and books. Wow. So coming from engineering, and you even said at the beginning, you were skeptical about life coaching. And I know so many engineers who are, and then you find yourself in life coach training. Take us back to that like, what did you have to shift about your mindset and this engineering part of Gina to become a great life coach? I love that question. The life coach certification, the training, it was a year long. It really transformed me, Zach. It completely opened my eyes to my past and it helped me understand the things I could have done differently, the things I could have done better in my past. So for me, it was almost a complete transformation. I had to push myself. I had to learn how to challenge myself. I had to learn how to get over fears and to accept my own weaknesses and my own flaws. If you would have told me a couple years ago, I was going to be on LinkedIn commenting and posting flyers and putting out videos on YouTube, I would have told you, Zach, you're crazy. I'm not doing that. I, I, no. I'm Gina. I want to be in the shadows. I want to be in the background. I don't want to be on the forefront. I don't like attention. And I would have said, you're crazy. I'm never putting myself on the internet. And that's just one example of how my life coaching training really expanded my mind and opened me up to so many opportunities and possibilities that I did not know existed. And I shunned them and I just mm -hmm. swept things under the rug without even thinking twice about it. So I've had to do a lot of transforming myself, a lot of growing, a lot of pushing myself, and I still do all the time, Zach. I'm still pushing myself and I'm failing forward and I'm happy to fail because that's how we learn. Coaching engineers. Here we are today, present day, Gina. Tell us, you know, through this whole journey, I mean, what an amazing story. And we could go another hour just unpacking all of these moments and the things that you've gone through probably the rest of the day. But just to bring it to the present for where you're at and helping engineers who are either facing similar questions and challenges that you did or asking challenging questions in their life and career, what would you say as you've been doing this now as a professional life coach for engineers, what are those big challenges that you just see again and again that engineers need help with? Yes, yes, excellent. I'm so glad you asked this, Zach. This is probably the biggest theme that I see and I can relate to it. The theme is you work hard in school, you check all the boxes, you get the job, you start working, and engineers and other STEM professionals, they have this sort of expectation. Um, some of them almost feel entitled, and I will tell you, I did. I thought I was entitled when I graduated with my bachelor's degree. I was entitled to a great job, and I was entitled to be happy because darn it, I worked really hard to get there. And then you start working as a young professional and you've got all these expectations and you think there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And then you realize, wait a second, this isn't what I thought it was gonna be. Hmm. Why are these people not agreeing with me? Why don't these people listen to me? 
Why is my boss making me do that? Why do I have to do customer service? I don't know anything about customer service. Why do I have to write all these ports? And it goes on and on and on and on. And so I think there is a big disconnect with the engineering student who has visions and expectations versus the way the world works. And a lot of people don't understand there's a disconnect. And then when they get out there and they start experiencing things that they didn't know existed, and when they realize the world doesn't work the way they think it should, they don't know how to handle it. They don't know mm. what to do. Or they blame, or they go into depressions, or they go back to school and change industries and change jobs, or they change their circumstances to try to find something better. That's a very common theme that I see over and over. And it has many different faces, right? It can mm -hmm. show itself in many different ways. And you're, you're standing here and you're shaking your head and you're nodding, Zach, as if you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, this is a really important point you're making, Gina. And, you know, we're, we're both coaches for engineers and we see this all the time. But the idea that if I change the my outward conditions, the circumstances, that that will be the key to changing my inward conditions and how I feel. And you mentioned, I, I want to be happy. I want to feel successful. I want to make an impact. And these are internal things that we're talking about. We, as engineers, we love to solve it in the physical world around us. And frankly, wherever you go, there you are. And if we don't ad address the inside then we bring those problems into the new circumstance. Now Gina's nodding her head. It's like, yeah, this is it. So tell us a little bit about what you do for helping engineers in your, your course and, and how it looks. If somebody says, yep, I resonate with this. I want to tackle these questions and actually deal with it at its root on the inside. Tell us about how you approach this and how you help engineers to move forward. Sure, absolutely. There are a few ways people can engage with me. First of all, I have a lot of free content on my website, which is deliberatedoing.com. I have recordings of webinars from all kinds of topics from career related to COVID related to being a student. Um, I have a career blog on my website. I have a newsletter people can sign up for. So those are some free ways people can engage with me. If anybody would like to take it to the next level, I always offer two free coaching sessions up front to anybody at all who's interested. That gives them the opportunity to understand how I operate as a coach and to get to know my style. And then from there, if they want to take it further and really work on themselves and do a deep dive, then we do individual coaching. If they decide maybe they don't want individual coaching, they have the option to take a course that I taught earlier this year. The course is called Overcoming Career Constraints. Mm. And what this course is, Zach, this course is all about teaching you the life skills, the people skills, the career skills that you didn't learn in engineering school. And when people can up-level their life skills and their career skills, it automatically translates to them being able to create a better career for themselves. Yeah. So that's what the course is all about. I love it. I love it. So I'll just tell the engineer listening, you know, if you want to take advantage of Gina's offer here for so free coaching with her, do it before her calendar's full, right? It's, it's, it's only free if she has capacity to take care of you. So, so don't hesitate, reach out and connect with Gina. Gina, this is so great. And I love right where we left this, right? Just hearing the arc of your story, how your experience mentally, how that played out in your life in some really hard negatively impactful ways. And just to, as a caution to any engineer out there, like take it seriously. Don't let this just be a thing that you push to the back burner again and again. Gene, I want to finish with this question. I always ask you know, great engineering, like great coaching. We want to ask great questions because questions lead and answers follow. And so if the engineer listening wants to be happy, what would you say is the best question to lead them with today? For the engineer who wants to be happy, I don't know that, that this is the best question, but I'm going to offer a question that comes to mind. And I'm going to proceed it with a quote. You attract what you are, not what you want. Many people want a dream job or a great job, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. 
but you're going to attract what you are. And what that means is whatever's going on inside of you is what you're going to find out there in the external world. Many people want to find the external job first and then sit back and say, okay, now I've got the dream job that I works for. Now I can be happy. And I'm here to tell them that's not the way it works. It's actually the reverse. First, you got to be happy inside and understand who you are. And from there, you go out and create the great job. So I'll just repeat, you attract what you are, not what you want. Mm -hmm. And a question that I would challenge people to ask themselves is what are your values as a person? What are your values and how do they align with your career? Awesome. What are I, your I values? I think that's a great question because I don't believe many people sit back and think about themselves and, and think about what do I value? What is it I'm actually looking for? Awesome. Thank you so much, Gina. And I'll make sure in our show notes that we have all these links and ways to connect with Gina, find her on LinkedIn, take her up on the incredible offer to spend some time digging into the challenges you're facing. Highly encourage you to partner with her and work with her as a coach if you need one. And, you know, like Gina said, Gina, however many years ago that was, that's exactly what she needed. And so if that's you, take action. Gina, thank you so much for being with us today. It was my pleasure. This was fantastic. Thank you, Zach. Hello, my friend. Zach White here again. And I wanted to let you know that's all we've got for this episode of the Happy Engineer podcast. Thank you so much for investing your time with me today. It is an absolute pleasure to be able to bring you this content. Just as a reminder, it would be amazing if you would subscribe and share this episode with any other engineers you know who may benefit from this. And if you're like me, I hope that you'll take some notes and more importantly, take action. In our audio version of the podcast on Apple Podcasts and any place that you go to find podcasts, there's a little more content from me about this episode in the debrief. If you really want to hear about how to put this into action, I'd encourage you to go grab that. But thank you for joining us for the video version of our interview today. And again, can't thank you enough for helping us to get the word out about the Happy Engineer podcast and what we're doing. If there's any way we can serve you, would love to do that. Go find us at oasisofcourage.com or reach out to me on social media at Oasis of Courage. And don't forget again to subscribe and click the bell to have notifications of upcoming releases of new episodes of the podcast. As always, I want to leave you with this. If you stay in your comfort zone, you're not going to grow. So let's crush comfort create courage, and let's do this.